I've made a lot of YouTube videos. I think like 700 to be exact. Often I get people message me giving me video ideas and often almost every single time actually they're not it. But this time kind of a banger actually. So I've been making a lot of these videos lately. You know, weird Etsy, Nintendo Switch accessories, crappy stuff from AliExpress, which is always fun. I didn't realize that five below sells Nintendo Switch accessories, but the whole gimmick is they're all five. $5. This could be a $5 budget Nintendo Switch accessory and controller video. And the idea came from, I never know how to pronounce this name. I am such an Australian. Jose R. Alcatraz, Nintendo Switch accessories from Five Below. So shout outs, my guy. There's only, I, mean, I say only. <laughs> 20 things. I mean, they're $5. Let's just buy it all. <laughs> we have a 24 game card case. What I want to do is I want to buy all this stuff and inspect it for quality. I see if it gets the wood quality seal of approval or if this is going to be the kind of case where it flies open and all your games fall out and you lose everything while you're on the bus on the way to work. Racing wheel for Switch controller two pack. I feel like these are a dime a dozen, but I'm buying everything. So we're going to add it the card. A travel case. I mean, it's five dollars how can you go wrong oh this is for the switch light so should we get the switch light and the regular i guess i did say i was getting everything right this could make or literally break the entire video. You guys know me. I have dunked my Switch in a bucket of water and broke it. I have tore into my Switch with a pair of metal pliers and broke it. So a screen protector that is supposedly indestructible and will protect it from anything, including a hammer, could end very badly for me. I'm going to do the test. It's oops proof. I'm oops. <laughs> I am the embodiment of the word oops. Oops. A silicone case for $5. Dual charger for Nintendo Switch controllers. LED gaming cable. What do you mean LED gaming cable? Continuous blue flowing light? Oh, through the cable? I don't think I've ever seen that before. Oh, wait, no, they have it in red. Oh, and it's not available. They also have it in green, but that's very Xbox. Blue is PlayStation. I want red. Isn't it funny? Nah, it's a point. That's going to get cut out the video. Guess below if you knew what's funny. Slide on comfort grip. Well, those four words can either be found in a Nintendo Switch accessory website or in a adult store. <laughs> PG would PG. Action grips. <laughs> Action. I love the names that they give these really cheap products. It's not a Joy-Con grip. It's an action grip. Oh, Lord. That is such a screw you. Oh, half a decade of companies creating products specifically to give the Switch Bluetooth. And then Nintendo going, well... Those are irrelevant. Car rest mount. I love these. Actually, this looks like a lot of... Like product <laughs> you know what i'm trying to say this is actually a full product for five bucks that's a steal they actually do sell their own five below joy cons which would be incredible if they were actually five dollars but i guess this falls into something that i've never seen before called five beyond so it's 20 probably the cheapest you could make a pair of joy cons unless they're literally going to be made out of graham crackers and fall apart the second they <laughs> exit the box clear case for switch boxing grips for switch i mean why? Two-pack controller handle. I'm sorry, what's the difference between that and then the action grips? And then finally, dancing wristband. That is everything that they have for Nintendo Switch. I just want to go to gaming accessories and see what else they have. They have a $12 gold headset? That has to be terrible. Oh, we could buy this $5 Bluetooth gaming LED soundbar speaker and connect it to the Switch using the Bluetooth adapter. We have nine 19 accessories, and it's only going to cost us $134. That's included with shipping for 20 Nintendo Switch accessories. That ain't bad. I was about to do the math, and then I remembered I'm shopping at five below. I'm really looking forward to this one. Oh, but first, I actually, uh, uh, the sponsor, and then come back, and then I'll do the click. Whoa, whoa, so whoa! This is happening right now as I'm making the video and not later because shirt has changed. Someone is hacking me. Shopping on Five Below. Hack him now. Hack him. Yeah. I'll just load up ExpressVPN. No, 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 no! Oh,
even while buying stuff for this video. You know, I'm entering passwords, credit card information, my email address, and more. And it only takes some basic computer knowledge for a hacker to get information to all of that when you're connected to an unencrypted connection. So you're best off protecting yourself by clicking the link down below and finding out how you can get three months free of ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN creates a secure tunnel around your device and the internet. So in other words, it puts all your private information into a lockbox so no one can take a sneaky peek. The fun part, though, is that you can use ExpressVPN to reroute your connection to a server in a country of your choice, which has so many uses. Unblocking YouTube videos, visiting websites that are geolocation blocked, getting stuff cheaper in other countries like Spotify, video games, and of course, everyone's favorite, heading to Netflix. You can watch shows not available in your country. Like for this guy, I can watch Rick and Morty and Modern Family. I mean, not using ExpressVPN is like going to a full buffet, paying for it, and then only eating at the salad bar. What a waste. So again, click the link down below to find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN free. Thanks, uh, other me. I don't know if I was over there. Now we're gonna open it all. It's here. Oh, wait, we're gonna need this. It arrived within like two days, but I just, I just, I just didn't, I'm now, I'm filming it now. So I don't really remember what I ordered, but I'm expecting it mostly to be just junk. Wait, the headset's brand is Bugger? Like when Australian gets upset and he goes, oh, Bugger. <laughs> Very excited to see what a $5 headset gets me. It feels terrible. It feels like a children's toy. You know when you buy those cheap fake phones for a toddler to pretend they're talking to somebody on because they've seen mommy and daddy do it? That's the plastic quality that I'm feeling here. Well, you know what? It's actually not too bad as far as like ear comfort. I'm not uncomfortable. Hello, hello. I'm ready for my epic gamer moment. The only way to really test this out is to plug it in and get into a Discord call. <sighs> Okay, I'm doing a video where I bought accessories from Five Below for the Switch. Oh, sick. I thought it would be funny if at one point I just switched to the, the microphone on this so you heard the audio quality drop, but I cannot get the mic to work and I don't know why. I think that tells you how good the audio quality is. <laughs> well, the, the, the shocking thing is I've actually got the headset to work, even with the flashing LED lights and the audio quality is actually pretty decent. I can honestly hear everything just fine. Uh... Oh, his name is Bugger. Oh, I apologize, Kyle. PC player of the year. Oh, it's a gamer. You know you've made it when you get the Five Below collab. Five Below, hit me up. I'll do a Hawker headset. You can get the bugger right next to the Hawker. <laughs> All right, let's do a pretty simple one. We've got a slide-on comfort grip. I, I guess we really did just buy everything on the website, huh? Yeah, I mean... Oh, they do not slide in easy because of the way it's shaped they actually get caught on the plastic and you have to push them back down <laughs> and then continue sliding them i mean it's fine for some reason though it has five led lights when it only needs four we have a racing wheel for the switch controller yeah it's fine it's a little steering wheel it's kind of uncomfortable actually there's no way to grip it i guess i just have to hold the Oh no, this is terrible. I kind of just have to straddle the entire thing and kind of cup it. Unless I hold it like this, there is nowhere to hold it like a wheel. This sucks. Also, with every racing wheel I've ever seen, there's been a giant cutout in the back so that when you're done, you can push the Joy-Con out. I actually have no way of grabbing this and taking it out. Whatever, this sucks. Switch the handle for Nintendo Switch controller. They remembered a hole in the back so I can just that's how the wheel is supposed to be. I have no problems with this. For $5, it's not bad, actually. All right, 24 game card case. Yeah, the cards fit in nicely. Why am I having so much trouble getting things out today? I feel like I'm gonna break my game. Is there like a special way to get this out? Oh, there is. There's a little plastic nib that clicks over the game once you put it in. What that mean? Secures it. You can take some of your uh, very talented wife who you love dearly, one of their stickers you can buy on Etsy. I'll leave a link down below to Kim's Etsy. You can really have some fun with it and sticker it up. They sent me two of these. 
It's a different one? <laughs> what? Okay, maybe I vaguely do remember there being two different ones. So the first one had the hole in the middle and then grooves on the back for your hands. This one does not. It does have extra padding inside for the Joy-Con, which is nice. Everything else feels about... Everything else feels about the same. I don't really know why they need two different and they're from the same company as well. What is the deal here? Okay. I remember getting a clear case for the regular Switch and the Switch Lite, but uh, apparently not. Yeah, no, this is a, this is a, this is a no from me. I kind of like the way a clear case looks on the Switch. The annoying thing is you can't dock it, you can't put it in a grip. That's why I never actually end up using it, but it gives a Switch a nice shine and it just kind of looks cool. The buttons are so low that the plastic actually comes up, even like above the D-pad. So trying to push the D-pad ends up feeling like you're pressing on the plastic. It doesn't feel good. Not a good case. Can't recommend it, but I mean, it's doing it job as far as protecting, but I am excited to hear the quality of this $5 Bluetooth speaker with LED lights, mind you. That's not bad. That's kind of cool, right? Ooh, it's connected. I'm gonna load up Kirby. I didn't mention this in my review. Kirby has sick music. <laughs> You know when you have really cheap speakers and they rattle? Even when they're at like a very low volume, there's like a crinkle. That's what's going on here. Even at a low volume, they're crinkling and they're rattling. At full, it's a mess. It's just hollow, it's empty, there's no bass. <laughs> It almost sounds like a meme. At least it looks pretty. Maybe the $5 of value went into the LED lights. Okay, this, I guess, is what I remembered getting two of. We have a Switch and Switch Lite travel case. As somebody who has their own Switch travel case, which you can, well, you could buy at satisfy.com, but it's sold out. By the way, I never thanked you all. I did actually, I thanked you all multiple times, but I never said they're all gone. We sold out everything. I don't know if we'll ever do any more. The point was for them to be limited, to sell them all out is uh, amazing. Thank you so much. That said, even though mine is sold out, you can still buy the regular cases and you don't have to resort to a $5, very squishy, honestly, you're probably better off not even putting it in this case case. No, it just feels cheap. I mean, other than that, it's fine, it works. It's the kind of zip that looks like it probably has a good 100 uses in it before it does that thing where half the zip pops off and you try and thread it back on, but it only zips half the way and then the back half starts opening again and then you just kind of give up on it and buy something else. That's that. Oh, I for a second, I thought, why did I buy a USB cord? And then I remembered it's because it lights up. I mean, it just it just looks like a USB cord right now. Oh, that's actually pretty sick. I actually kind of like that. It looks like there's power coursing through the cord. I'm kind of about that. I kind of think that's probably my favorite thing so far. Ooh, we have the dual. Get out of here, you boring normal cord. Joy-Con charging station. This will actually look sick with the white Joy-Cons as well. I gotta go put it on charge, but that's what it'll look like. Wait. Why? I will never, ever, ever understand when these companies make Nintendo Switch accessories and make the charge cord anything other than USB-C. I honestly also don't really trust it. When the Switch uses a USB-C to charge everything, I kind of get nervous about, and maybe it's just a, uh, maybe, 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 what's the word I'm looking for, Zach? Superstitious. Superstitious thing, but I don't want to charge it with something that's not intended. I was hoping to use the flashy USB-C cord, but I guess I guess I'll just... Good lord. Oh yeah, I remember being impressed with this because it was shockingly well made, or at least looked like it was shockingly well made for something that was only $5. We have the headrest mount for Switch. Hi. <laughs> Ugh. Well, it's not coming off. <laughs> How sturdy does it feel? It's actually super sturdy. Honestly, this is one of the best ones I've ever seen. It's way better than other alternatives and it's literally $5. This is gonna last 
It's yeah. never gonna fall apart. It's and not... it's multifunctional, so you don't just have to use it for the Switch. Like, it's actually sick. For five bucks? Yeah, yeah. this is good. As far as everything being worth five dollars or not, these have to be the least worth five dollars. That's a huge pet peeve of mine. So there's a little contraption here on a Joy-Con that, you know, when you plug it into most things, it clicks in and then you got to press the button down to push it back out again. But some things just don't even bother. And I guess these figured, why would we? And I guess it's fine since you're... It's not fine, actually. As soon as I go to grip them and I put pressure on them, it pushes the Joy-Cons up. So the whole time while playing, you're gonna have to push them back down and constantly be adjusting them. And then honestly, eventually they'll probably just fly right, oh God. This is the worst thing. And it's the cheapest and easiest to make decent for $5. I guess I'll open the Joy-Cons now so we can get them on charge if we need to. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. I am actually in shock and disbelief. I am not hemming this up for the camera. I have tried, I wanna say a hundred at this point, different kinds of cheap Joy-Cons. These are immediately among the worst I have ever seen. And the biggest offender is whatever they have done to the buttons on top. Rough, jagged, way too chunked out of the top. I feel like I could get a piece of wood and saw it down with the groove of this. I am cutting through this cardboard with the top of this thing. What's even worse is with this right one, barely even clicks. You have to come all the way up to the top of the corner. How do they connect? Because they don't slide in. They have these weird grooves at the top and bottom. That is so... Weird. This is the first pair of Joy-Cons I've ever seen that don't slide in. They're not immediately working when you clip them in, which I'm not surprised about because of the way that they work. All right, well, they are connected. Uh, there's some things I do like about these. You know, there's pros and cons to everything. I hate these buttons up top. We've been there, but I love a clicky button. The analog sticks are straight from a switch. They are exactly the same, but it's responsive. Everything works, all the buttons work other than this shoulder button. And considering that they clip in really weird, they're actually super secure. And the final thing I would say in their favor is I kind of like the way it looks. It actually has an, an interesting vibe. I don't mind it. The Joy-Cons are already getting kind of scratched up. The plastic that they've used does not have good coating at all. I can kind of draw shapes and draw my name just with my finger nail, which is starting to look hideous already. For 20 bucks, it's fine. Silicone case time. I'm gonna have to unclip these beasts. It looks like my switch is about to rub a bank, but other than that, it's a silicone case. Well, hold on a second. They've tried to put a grip texture on the back, but they're so big and sharp, it's actually super uncomfortable. When you're playing Switch, you're kind of holding it like this, right? If anything, the texture would have to be around here. Who's holding the Switch like this that they need texture on the back? It's a really weird thing to do. That does not feel good at all. Finally, the moment I'm sure so many of you have been waiting for, the $5 indestructible screen protector, and even has the picture of a hammer striking the switch. So I really don't think I would be doing you guys any justice as a content creator if I didn't put it to the test. I'm excited. This is cool. I'll have an indestructible switch. I can already tell this is gonna be good. You do this to get the bubbles out. Here on my channel, I have made a lot of dumb mistakes. I have dunked my Switch in a bucket of water and broke it. The case said it was waterproof. A lot of people in the comments said, water resistant isn't the same thing as waterproof would. I agree. The case said waterproof, not water resistant. This literally says shatter protection. There is no way I have misinterpreted the meaning of this product if I hit this switch with a hammer, no matter how hard, the glass will not shatter. I'm just kidding. I can't do that to my new OLED. You guys really thought I was going to... Whoa! It legitimately didn't break. Not even a scratch. I'm 
am actually impressed by this. Granted, I don't know what would happen if I took a raw hammer to a switch. Not willing to try it out. But this isn't even leaving a dent. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. It's broken. No, yeah, I did. I, I, I did actually break it. I think I, uh... <laughs> I think I hit it too hard with the hammer. I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing at my, how dumb I am. The screen took the hit beautifully. I think I might have crushed something on the inside. I mean, this little bit of plastic here is is broken off, and um, it's not uh, it's not turning on. The actual switch is broken. Bugger. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you enjoy these videos, whether it's enjoying me buying a lot of stuff and trying it or breaking switches, can you please smash that like button and subscribe? It really helps support. More videos coming soon. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate you all. Bye. Oh, I never, I never opened the dancing wristband. Yet. Oh, I'm constantly shocked at the poor value and low effort put into these. You ever, when you were a kid, you had those things that you slap on your wrist and they kind of curl around? That's what this feels like. Yeah, that really took no effort on my part whatsoever. I just destroyed that whole product with my bare hands with very little effort. This was the worst thing in the video, and I almost missed it. All right, all right, I'm at the camera cut out literally in the last 30 seconds. The moral of the story is don't buy anything from Five Below. It's $5, sure, but it'll last you maybe an evening. Awful. It'll break your Switch. Not me. I didn't do it. Five Below broke my Switch. I had nothing to do with it.